All right. I'm going to go ahead and get started here. Um, thank you for everyone joining us today. Um, we're going to be uh, for, I guess, the fourth session now of Cyber Smart Briefs. Uh, we're talking about how to identify tech support scams today. Um, presenting will be myself, and then we'll have uh, TJ Horner and Kyle Harris covering the Q&A session later. Um, for those of you guys who haven't been here before, I know I see a few repeated names in, or returning guests in here, and we guys, uh, we really appreciate that. But uh, these are just supposed to be short, little 10 to 15 minute um, training sessions on just general cybersecurity awareness, just for end users on how to handle cybersecurity in your day-to-day -day life or other applications that we don't support. Um, you know, we do value your feedback on what we're presenting. Um, so feel free to drop any topics uh, that you would like to discuss in the Q&A in the chat, um, which you can find in the top right corner of the Teams window. Those messages you can post anonymously if you check the box. Um, it also gets monitored throughout the webinar. Um, and you know, just provide us some suggestions on what you guys want to hear about so that we can provide training that you want to learn. Um, with that being said, let's kind of get into it here. Um, today we're talking about tech support scams and sort of the common types that we see in today's cybersecurity world. Uh, you know, primarily we're seeing a lot of browser hijacks, uh, phishing, phone calls, and text messaging. Um, so I guess for those of you guys who don't know what browser hijacking is, we can get into that. Um, it is a malware program that modifies a uh, web browser settings without a user's permission. And the hijackers often arrive via embedded code in a visited website, pop-ups or underneath pop-up ads and promoted images or search items. You know, they may install new unwanted toolbars or search engines in your browser or create pop-ups on the web page or as a notification on your computer. Uh, that's something we've seen a little bit more of an increase of recently. Um, where you know you get a little notification from Google Chrome or something in the bottom right corner of your screen uh, advising you of a uh, quote unquote security alert. So you know we're going to talk about sort of what to look out for. So you know it kind of presents itself as a virus alert that will impersonate companies such as Microsoft, Google, Apple, Apple or McAfee. Um, and companies will never initiate contact with you for a virus detection. You know, they may contact you in response to a support request that you initiate where you're reaching out to them and then they're reaching back over to you. But, you know, they're never gonna just reach out to you through your web browser saying, hey, call this number. It, if you see something that says call a number, it's not gonna be legitimate. So, you know, uh, another th other things to look out for would be messages that imply an emergency or make an emotional appeal. So, you know, again, calling this number to remove the virus, click here to claim your refund or congratulations, you've won, click this to receive your prize. You know, playing lots of loud sounds or recorded voice saying, you know, alert, alert, there's been a virus detected on your computer. Um, sometimes they're even displaying things such as countdown timer to computer lockout or infection. You know, and it may even lock the web browser so it can't be closed. Um, so, you know, to close the web browser, it's best to restart the computer, or you can do Control Alt Delete or Task Manager. Um, just uh, make sure you can go and close out that web browser because it will uh, prevent you from closing it. Um, so here's an image of what browser hijacking can look like. You know, there's multiple warning signs here. Obviously, Microsoft had or won't be telling you to call that number. Um, so, you know, having a number on that web page, there's multiple instances of poor grammar in here. And then also even the tab name is Microsoft Official Support. Microsoft doesn't have official in any of their web pages for support. It'll just say Microsoft Support. Um, and, you know, Microsoft Support, again, won't be locking down your computer, won't be trying to you to take action unless you contact them first. So, you know, you've seen what a bad image or what an image of browser hijacking looks like, but we do want to compare that to what actual virus detection looks like. Um, so, 
you know, on the left side of the page here, you have what would be a typical warning from Microsoft Edge or uh, Defender, where it's Microsoft saying, hey, don't go towards this site. It's been restored to Microsoft, reported to Microsoft for harmful programs or trying to steal personal information. Uh, and then on the right side, you would have Sophos, which is what we standardize. Um, and the Sophos ones are just little notification in the bottom right corner, and it'll just say, hey, this thing installed here at this on your computer was detected as having malware, or some sort of generic safety issue. And then the second notification says, we cleaned those up. We took care of that action for you. We're not asking you to do anything. Um, and it'll just handle everything for you. So phishing would be the second method that we see a lot of. Um, and, you know, phishing is very common nowadays, especially coming into the holiday season and tax season coming up. We're going to see more and more um, Amazon or IRS scams through phishing uh, messaging. So, you know, just looking for messages that contain an immediate call to action or threat, you know, click this link to restore access or log in now to avoid account closure. Um, oftentimes, especially with tech support scams, they'll reference an, an, a completely generic technical service department or tech support without specific identification. And then obviously, you know, paying attention to the domains on where those emails are coming from. Microsoft support emails that aren't coming from Microsoft.com or Amazon delivery emails from other domains besides just Amazon.com. Uh, the next one that we see a lot of um, is phone scams. You know, some good warning signs to look out for are um, caller ID does not match. So somebody calling from any town USA saying it's Microsoft or it's an unrecognized phone number. That's why it's really important to have our phone number saved so you can tell, yes, this is Aberdeen calling me. Um, the other thing is, again, Microsoft never initiates tech support calls. They do return calls that you initiate. However, with us, you should be reaching out to us for support with Microsoft issues um, so that we can handle that. Uh, attempting to gain personal information from you is another thing. You know, they're trying to figure out your username, your password, or social security number, or any sort of credit card or bank account info, anything that they can use to gain access where they shouldn't. Um, and then attempts to get you to purchase gift cards or cryptocurrency. The cryptocurrency one definitely has become a more common theme recently, and it's something um, that's starting to become a lot more of a trend with these scams. You know, a lot of times they'll threaten with legal action where they're saying, oh, I'm going to call the police or you'll be hearing from my lawyers, things like that. And it, again, it's just to try and intimidate you to take action to um, give sort of credentials away or give personal information away. You know, and the IRS won't call you, especially with tax season coming up again. They're only going to communicate through certified email um, where they're going to send you a letter before or they're not going to call you. So you'll get the letter from them. And again, it'll come from official government documents. It won't come from just a address anywhere. The other thing we see a lot of is text messaging scams. I know personally, I get a lot of text messaging scams, a lot of UPS ones in particular. So again, those messages containing a call to action um, it's going to be an urgent re notice regarding your order. Please act now or, you know, obviously the car's extended warranty will expire or click this link. Um, it's received without request from the service. You know, UPS does have a service where um, you can sign up for text messages for your packages, but they're never going to send you a text message like the one on the right here saying regards USPS with some random code next to it. and. Obviously, that link is to a malicious website. Um, so just a couple of different red flags here, obviously. And then incorrect titles like the USPS or Office 365 support team um, or links to suspicious websites. Again, just seeing that link there, wes.site isn't something that you should be trusting. So we do have a couple of helpful references just for 
um, in-depth guides on how to identify scams for different um, different service providers. So uh, we've got one here, and these are QR codes, so feel free to scan these with your phone. Uh, we'll also be posting links into the Q&A chat. Um, so this one would be for Microsoft, uh, their guide to identifying scams. They actually have a really nice like three-minute video on just typical Microsoft practices and you know what to look out for for a scam. Um, here's one for Amazon. It's a little bit more of an in-depth reading guide, but again, you know, just good things on what to look out for. And then the third one here, I'm gonna give you guys a second to uh, scan that. And then the third one would be IRS, um, especially with tax season coming up here pretty quickly. Just keeping an eye out for those IRS scans.